Hello students, welcome you all for the today's lecturing session on robotics. In today's class, we are discussing with introduction regarding to the robotics, then definition of a robot, then definition of robotics, then classification of robotics, then what do you mean by the work volume, then advantage, disadvantage and application of industrial robot. Okay, so very fast thing we need to know how the word robot was coined that is very much important okay so the world robot was first coined in the year 1920 by the Czech novelist Karl Kepek okay so according to the Czech novelist Karl Kepek the world robot it is nothing but it is a servant okay it is just a nothing but servant and it can be used as a artificial agent for the replacement of human labor but actual technological development was made in the year 1957 by English inventor Cyril Walter Kenwood and he invented a manipulator and it can be moved in three different directions like X, Y and Z direction and that robot was used in the industries that's why it will become the industrial robot. Okay, so the manipulator or industrial robot it is one and the same it is mainly used for purpose of the industries okay so that is call it as the introduction regarding to the industrial robot. next very important thing it is called what is mean by the definition of robot okay so what is mean by the robot robot is a reprogrammable okay it is a reprogrammable multifunctional multifunctional manipulator okay multifunctional manipulator that are designed to that are designed to move material comma parts comma tools through variable programmed motion through variable programmed motion so this is the definition of robot so what is mean by the robot robot is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator that are designed to move material parts tools through variable programmed motion to perform variety of tasks okay to perform variety of tasks so the task means it may be pick and place operation okay so it may be in order to transfer the component from one place to the another place or in case of the industries the machine loading and unloading condition or during the spray painting operation welding operation then laser cutting operation so in order to do such kind of task we are going to use the robot here the robot is a reprogrammable multifunctional manipulator that are designed to move material parts tool through variable programmed motion to perform the variety of tasks and the robot it is also called it as an artificial agent and it can be used as a substitute for human labor so this is regarding to the robot then what is mean by the robotics the robotics is a field of technology that deals with design conception construction operation and application of robot okay so what is mean by the robotics robotics it is a field of technology okay it is a field of technology that deals with that deals with design conception construction operation and application of robot okay so this is the definition of the robotics so robotics is a field of technology that deals with design conception construction operation and application of robot also the industrial robot are a robot it possess human like characteristics okay the robot is nothing but it performs the human like characteristics and it can be used as a substitute for human labor so that means what are the human like characteristics that means it is it can make communication okay 
then interaction and decision making capability to respond sensory input okay capability to respond sensory input so these are the the robot can perform like the human like characteristics okay so what does it mean by the robotics robotics is a field of technology that deals with design conception construction operation and application of robot and it also performs the human like characteristics like it can think like a human that means capability to respond sensory input suppose if i giving a command to transfer this component from this place to this place it will give this it will take the sensory input then communication it will ask the command so whether your command is right or wrong can i transfer this component from this place to this place then interaction and decision making then it will finally take the decision and make the operation and transfer the component from one place to the another place so this is regarding to the human like characteristics next very important one it is called terms related with the industrial robot okay so what is mean by the industrial robot i already told in the year 1957 the english inventor cyril walter kenward he invented a manipulator that can be moved in all the three directions like x y and z direction and that robot was used in the industry that's why it is called industrial robot then what are the main parts of the industrial robot that is very much important observe here this is the base okay and this is the body and this is the joint i will call it as joint number 1 and this is the joint this is called joint number 2 and this is called link 1 and this is called link 2 and this is called wrist and this is called end effector okay first we need to know one by one what is mean by the link okay the link is a rigid member that connects the joint is it right here the link is a rigid member that connects the joint so it provides the relative motion between the input link and the output link that means the motion of the input link provides the various motion to the output link okay so this is called as link a link is a rigid member that connects the joint here the motion of the input link causes the various motion to the output link so first thing it is called as the link second one what is mean by the joint okay a joint it integrates the links together is it right so joint number 2 it is integrates the link 1 and link 2 a joint it integrates the link and it provide controlled relative motion between the link 1 and the link 2 okay so what is a joint joint it integrates the links and it provides the controlled relative motion between the input link and output link next third one end effector okay what is mean by the end effector that is very much important end effector it is a tool or a gripper and it is connected to the end of the robotic arm with the help of the wrist and this end effector it is usually in the form of the hand or a tool in order to perform the variety of task based on the application so this is called as the end effector next fourth one base so the entire robotic arm it is stand on the base that means the base it acts as the support for the robotic arm okay so here the base it acts as the support for the entire robotic arm next fifth one it is called manipulator so what is mean by the manipulator here this body and this complete portion it is called as the arm here the body arm and the wrist together it is called as the manipulator and this manipulator it is designed to move material parts tools through variable programmed motion without the direct human contact so this is called it as the manipulator i repeat what is the terms related to the industrial robot here very first one it is called the link a link is a rigid member that connects the joint here the motion of the input link gives the various motion to the output link then what is mean by the joint a joint integrates the two links together okay so that means it provides the controlled relative motion between the input link and output link then 
What is meant by the end effector? End effector is a tool or a gripper connected to the end of the robotic arm with the help of the wrist. Okay, and this wrist are shaped like a tool or a hand based on the application. Then base, it is a support for the entire robotic arm. Then manipulator, body, arm and a wrist together it is called as a manipulator and this is designed to move the material parts and the tools through variable program and motion to perform the variety of tasks. So this is regarding to the terms related to the industrial robot. Next one, what is mean by the work volume? So work volume means it is the volume or space, it is the volume or space within which within which robot can operate. So this is called work volume. I repeat what is meant by the work volume. So work volume it is nothing but it is the volume or a space within which robot can operate that is that is called as the work volume and what are the main parameters it is very important decide the work volume of the industrial robot there are four parameters first one it is called size next second one it is called physical configuration next one it is called limit of its arm and fourth one it is called joint manipulation. So this is regarding to the work volume. Okay. What is the work volume? It is the volume or a space within which robot can operate. It is called as the work volume. And the work volume of the any industrial robot, it is mainly depends upon the four parameters. First one it is called size. Second one it is called physical configuration. Third one it is called limit of its arm. Fourth one it is called joint manipulation. Then, based on the physical configuration, the robots are classified into four types. Okay, based on the physical classification, robots are classified into four types. First one, it is called Cartesian configuration robot. Second one, it is called cylindrical configuration robot. Third one, it is called polar configuration robot. And fourth one, it is called jointed arm configuration robot. Okay, so this industrial robot, whatever the figure we have written, this itself it is called jointed arm configuration robot. Okay, so this itself it is called jointed arm configuration robot. Very first one, we need to know what is mean by the Cartesian configuration robot. So, in case of the Cartesian configuration robot, here motion of these kind of robot traces the rectangular workspace. Okay, here motion of this kind of robot traces the rectangular workspace. That means this is called y direction, this is called x direction and this is called z direction. That means this kind of robot it consists of three perpendicular sliding joint along x, y and z axis. Okay, observe here this is the one joint it is connected to the wrist and this is the another joint it is connected to the vertical column and another joint it is connected to the base okay so what is mean by the Cartesian configuration robot your motion of these kind of robots are traces the rectangular workspace that's why it is also called as the rectilinear robot and these robots are having the three perpendicular sliding joint along x y and z direction that's why the Cartesian configuration robot it is also called as the X, Y and Z robot. Then observe the motion. This Cartesian configuration robot can be moved up or down, left or right and front or backward side. And motion of this kind of robot can be start or stop anywhere along the X, Y and Z axis system. So this is called as the Cartesian configuration robot. Okay, observe here, it consists of three perpendicular sliding joint X, Y and Z and this robot can move up or down, left or right, front or backward and motion of this kind of robot can be start or stop anywhere along X, Y and Z axis. So this is called as the Cartesian configuration robot. Next, second one, what is mean by the cylindrical configuration robot? Here, the motion of this kind of robot traces the cylindrical workspace. 
okay here motion of this kind of robot traces the cylindrical workspace then it consists of the slider okay it consists of the slider in the horizontal position then it contains the vertical column in the vertical position okay so what are the two main parts it consists of the slider in the horizontal position and column in the vertical position then very much important thing it is called here this entire arm assembly so this complete it is called arm assembly this entire arm assembly can be move up or down with the help of the z joint okay this entire arm assembly can be move up or down with the help of the z joint then this vertical column can be rotated about its own axis using the r joint okay here yeah, this vertical column can be rotated about its own axis using the r joint next very important one this arm can be radially move in and out using the x joint okay so this is the configuration of cylindrical configuration robot okay here yeah, the motion of these kind of robots are traces the cylindrical workspace it contains slider in the horizontal position and column in the vertical position that means here this entire arm assembly can be move up or down using the z joint then vertical column rotated about its own axis using the r joint then this arm can be move radially in and out using the x joint so this is called as the cylindrical configuration robot then third one it is called jointed arm configuration robot we are already discussed what are the main parts of the jointed arm configuration robot it contains the two link two joints one body and the base okay and the motion of these kind of robots are traces the sphere okay motion of these kind of robots are traces the sphere then what is the function of the link a link is a rigid member okay that connects the joint and motion of the input link provides the various motion of the output link then what is a joint a joint it integrates the two links together to provide the control relative motion between the input link and output link then what is mean by the end effector end effector is a tool or a gripper and it is connected to the wrist at the end of the robotic arm and it is designed to move material parts and tools based on the application then your base it acts as the support for the entire robotic arm then very important one what is mean by the manipulator here the body arm wrist together it is called it as the manipulator that are designed to move material parts and tools through variable program and motion without direct human contact so this is called it as the jointed arm configuration next we are moving on to the last one it is called polar configuration robot the next type it is called polar configuration robot so what is mean by the polar configuration robot it is very much important in this kind of robot here the motion of this kind of robot traces the partial sphere okay so what is mean by the polar configuration robot here motion of this kind of robot traces the partial sphere that's why it is also called it as the polar configuration robot then what are the important parts of the polar configuration robot that is also very much important it mainly consists of the base vertical column sliding arm and the pivot okay so very much important thing it is called the four main parts are base vertical column sliding arm and the pivot then the main thing we need to observe here it is called here vertical column it is mounted on the base and it is rotated about its axis using the z joint okay so this is the first point here the vertical column is mounted on the base and it is rotated about its own axis by using the z joint then very much important one it is called here sliding arm okay here this sliding arm can be extend and retract to provide the particular reach okay so this is the second one then very much important one it is called here the pivot is used to rise or lower the arm okay so this is the motion regarding to the polar configuration robot here the main thing it is called pivot is used to rise or lower the arm that is mainly we are going to use in the forging operation okay observe here what is mean by the polar configuration robot here motion of this kind of robot traces the partial sphere okay and here the main parts it is called base vertical column sliding arm and the pivot very first thing it is called here vertical column is mounted on the base and it is rotated about its own axis using the z joint 
then sliding or a it is extended and retract to provide the particular reach then pivot is used to rise or lower the arm so this is called polar configuration robot okay there are mainly four types the first one it is called cartesian configuration robot here the motion of the robot it traces the rectangular workspace then cylindrical configuration here motion of the robot traces the cylindrical workspace in case of the polar configuration motion of the robot traces the partial sphere and in case of the jointed arm configuration motion of the robot traces the complete sphere okay then the main parts it is called in case of the cartesian configuration robot here it consists of three sliding joint along x y and z direction and the robot can be moved anywhere along z axis y axis and x axis and it can be start or stop anywhere along x y and z axis system but in case of the cylindrical configuration robot we are having the up and down movement rotational movement as well as the sliding arm can be radially move in and out but in case of the slide uh, polar configuration robot here sliding arm can be extended and retract to provide the particular reach and pivot is used to rise or lower the arm and vertical column is used to rotate about its own axis so these are call it as the different types of configuration based on the work volume okay then very much important thing it is called various types of joints we are going to use in case of the robotic arm that is very much important we all know that the robotic arm it is nothing but it is an industrial robot it performs the human like characteristics that means it is capability to sen respond sensory input communication interaction and decision making and for that we need to classify into five types that is called linear joint orthogonal joint rotational joint revolving joint and twisting joint that is very much important first one what is mean by the linear joint here the linear joint provides the linear motion okay linear joint provides the linear motion in such a way that here the axis of the input link and axis of the output link are parallel to each other okay observe here what is mean by the linear joint the linear joint provides the linear motion here the axis of the input link and axis of the output link are parallel to each other then these kind of joints are called as the linear joint then what is mean by the orthogonal joint that is very much important so the orthogonal joint provides the linear sliding motion okay it provides the linear sliding motion and very much important thing it is called here the axis of the input link and axis of the output link are perpendicular to each other okay here the axis of the input link and output link are parallel to each other but here axis of the input link and output link are perpendicular to each other then it is called as the orthogonal joint then what is mean by the rotational joint that is very much important so linear joint and orthogonal joint mainly obtain it is used to obtain the linear motion but the rotational joint it's mainly used to obtain the rotary motion okay it is mainly used to obtain the rotary motion in such a way that very important thing it is called here the axis of rotation here the axis of rotation it is axis of rotation is perpendicular to the input link and output link okay so this is very much important what happens in case of the rotational joint it provides the rotary motion and very much important thing it is called the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the input link and output link then what is mean by the revolving joint okay so the revolving joint is also provides the rotary motion okay revolving joint is also provides the rotary motion here axis of rotation for the input link is parallel and axis of rotation for the output link it is perpendicular okay observe here so this is the parallel direction and this is the perpendicular direction that means here the axis of rotation for the input link is parallel and the axis of rotation for the output link it is perpendicular then this is called as the revolving joint then what is mean by the twisting joint so this twisting joint is also produce the rotary motion but here the axis of rotation for the input link and the output link are parallel to each other okay so twisting motion normally we can observe the accelerator in the bike okay so here we are obtaining the twisting motion but the axis of the axis of rotation for the input link and output link are 
parallel to each other. So this is regarding to the five types of joints what we are going to use in case of the industrial robot. I repeat, what is mean by the linear joint? The linear joint provides the linear motion. Here, axis of, axis of the input link and output link are parallel to each other. Next, orthogonal joint. The orthogonal joint provides the linear sliding motion. That means, your axis of the input link and output link are perpendicular to each other. Then, rotational joint. So, rotational joint provides the rotary motion. That means, here the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the input link and output link. Then, revolving joint. The revolving joint also provides the rotary motion. Here, the axis of rotation for the input link is parallel and axis of rotation for the output link is perpendicular. Then, last one, twisting joint. Here, the axis of rotation for the input link and output link is parallel to each other. So, this is regarding to the various types of joints we are going to use in the industrial robot. Next, last, very important thing it is called advantages, disadvantages and application of industrial robot. So, what is the main advantages with the help of industrial robot? Very first thing it is called, it increases productivity. Okay, it increases productivity of the operation. Then, increases consistency and quality of the product increases cons consistency and quality of the product then it provides safety of the operation okay industrial robots can provide safety of the operation then it can also work in the hazardous areas okay it can also used in the hazardous areas where human labor cannot operate okay next it can work continuously it can work continuously without facing without facing fatigue problem without facing fatigue problem then it can perform multiple tasks simultaneously multiple tasks simultaneously then very much important one it is called it produce less defective parts okay it produces less defective parts next last one it is called it can be used as it can be used as substitute it can be used as substitute for human labor okay it can be used as a substitute for human labor so these are the some of the advantages of the industrial robot first one it increases the productivity of the operation then it increases the consistency and quality of the product why because in case of the human error so because of that so consistency and quality of the product it coming down from from time to time but it also provides the safety of the operator that means even the hazardous area can be operated with the help of the industrial robot. Then it can work continuously without facing any fatigue problem. Multiple tasks can be performed. Then it, reduce, it produces less defective parts. Then it can be used as a substitute for human labor. Then what are the disadvantages? High initial investment. Okay. High initial investment is needed for the industrial robot and its operation then high maintenance cost okay high maintenance cost is required then in order to operate the industrial robot power supply is essential okay power supply is essential then good program capability are good programmer and computers and computers are necessary to operate the industrial robot and last one it increases unemployment okay that means it reduces the opportunity of 
human labor. Okay, so some of the disadvantages is called high initial investment, high maintenance cost is also required, then power supply is essential to operate the industrial robot, good programmer and computers are necessary and it increases the problem of unemployment. Okay, then applications. So very first thing it is called hazardous areas, industrial robot can be operated in the hazardous areas like spray painting. laser cutting and welding operations okay so some of the hazardous areas like spray painting laser cutting and welding the industrial robot can be used then material handling so for material handling like pick and place operation and machine loading and unloading condition okay machine loading and unloading we can use the industrial robot. So dangerous areas like nuclear power plant, thermal power plant and atomic research center. Then difficulty in handling like forging, heat treatment operation as well as in the cryogenic and refrigerating condition. Then other areas like agricultural sector as well as the constructional sector we are going to use the industrial robot. Then we can also use in the processing and assembly operation also we can be used the industrial robot. So that means like some of the car companies like uh, Benz, Audi, all are now, nowadays for the processing and assembly operation we are using with the industrial robot. Okay, so some of the areas like hazardous areas like spray painting, laser cutting and welding, then material handling like pick and place operation, machine loading and unloading condition, then dangerous areas like nuclear power plant, thermal power plant as well as in the atomic research center, then difficulty in handling like forging operation as well as in the E treatment operation then other areas like agricultural sector and constructional field also we can use with the industrial robot okay so this completes the the robotics and uh, work volume classification advantage disadvantage and application of industrial robot thank you